Cooper. I'm Aquila Nash. Thank you for joining me today. This is going to be a wonderful program. I think you will enjoy the things the Lord has stirred my heart to, to minister to you. You know, on, on the prophetic whisper, most often I talk about gifts of the Holy Spirit, the healing power of God, miracles of God, and, and just try to allow the anointing of God's presence to flow out through my life that you might be touched in some way. And I pray you will be touched by this program today. Let me get right into some of your letters. Uh, later, we will be going to the teaching of the Word. And then at the close of the program, we will come aside and we will pray together, believing God for miracles. Pa a pastor from Egypt writes, Dear Sister Aquila, I am blessed to hear you on the healing channel in Arabic and also on the church channel in English. You are very blessing to us. My wife accepted a word of knowledge from you by the Holy Spirit, and she is healed of pain in her back. Hallelujah. So he's wanting prayer concerning his ministry and, and returning to a church. And Pastor, we're standing with you. This person, uh, Yolanda, writes and says, I was watching your program on TBN last night. You spoke a healing word. I received that word for my knees. They were cracking and hurting, and it was hard to go up and down stairs or just to stand for a long period of time. Praise God, it has been 24 hours and no pain or cracking. I thank God for you. You remind me a lot of my mom. And it says, when she was very stern. Okay, so <laughs> I, I understand what you mean, sweetheart. I get very serious sometimes. My grandchildren see that in me also. Evelyn from New York writes, I sent you a request a few weeks ago for prayer concerning a battle I was having with the IRS. I am joyful to report that I have been informed by the IRS that they are closing the case and I'm not required to pay any more money. Hallelujah. She goes on and says, you are one of the few that dare operate in the gifts of the Spirit on TV. Well, sweetheart, this is just the ministry God placed in my life years ago. And if you get me, this is kind of what you get, okay? And I, I honestly uh, come before you in, in a sense of fear and trembling. That's right, because I take it so seriously to do the things I'm doing and sometimes saying the things I say. I really just told the Lord just before I came on set, Lord, I'm not understanding a lot of these words you're having me share. And he just came right back to, uh, to me and said, you trust me. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, Deborah from Florida writes, I just wanted you to know that the first time I saw you on TBN, you sent the word of deliverance for alcohol, and I was immediately delivered. Hallelujah. I have not had that nagging desire for alcohol since. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord with you, Deborah. I am so thankful. If you need deliverance today from some bondage, there are many bondages. You know, sin is just sin. Our bondages can just be bondages. We can be bound in one way or another. But Jesus came to set the captives free. And I believe with you today, perhaps you're bound with drugs or alcohol. Right this moment, I set myself in agreement with you. Jesus makes you free today. In Jesus' name, receive that. Jesus makes you free today in the name of Jesus. That means by the authority and the power of Jesus. If you wonder why does she always say in the name of Jesus? Because, honey, I know it can't be uh, through my power and my might. It can only come about, your healing, your deliverance, any good thing can only come about through the authority of Jesus' name. And that's why I do that. Here is Rose, and she says, I was watching one of my favorite TBN shows on television. I normally watch online. When the show ended, I went into another room to do some cleaning, but I left the TV on in the other room. 
As I was cleaning, the Holy Spirit drew me back to the television. I heard and sensed the anointing of the Lord from this woman of God, and I said, who is that? So I went back to the other room to watch what I was sensing in my spirit. As I listened, the Lord ministered to me. I was encouraged and strengthened in my faith, and I received a healing. I was so touched by the anointing of the Lord as you ministered that I went directly to your website. When I read the prophetic insights, I began to weep. She's talking about the prophecies that we put up on my website, okay? And she was reading those. Every word was for me, and much of it the Lord had already spoken to me. I was again strengthened and encouraged. Praise God for your obedience in ministry, and, and may the Lord bless you. Here is a prayer request from Kuwait. Said uh, she's expecting her first baby and wanting prayer for that pregnancy. Elaine from South New South Wales, thank you for agreement and prayer. Thank you for encouraging my faith. Okay. Uh, from Italy, uh, please pray for me a good permanent job with a good salary and uh, that God will send a Christian man into my life. Do you know God is interested in everything that touches your life? That's right. He's interested in uh, a spouse for your life. Uh, he's interested in your jobs. He's inter interested in everything that touches you, okay? Uh, from Queensland, said they're uh, having an operation and they are trusting God for healing, okay? And uh, let me say, here's a, one from South Wales. I'm 39. I've been trying for a child for three years and they can't get pregnant and they have a thyroid problem. I trust God with you. You know, children are a blessing for the Lord, from the Lord. And I believe he wants to bless people with children, those who de desire children. So you just stand on the word of God that God wants you blessed. He wants you as an overcomer. And I believe with you that God will heal your body, do whatever is necessary that you can have a child in Jesus' name. Would you come and go with me now to our, our teaching of the word of God and let's get right into the scripture. Come go with me. I want to speak to you again today concerning miracles. You know, I, I think miracles are so exciting. I love to read about the miracles uh, in the Word of God. I love to see miracles in my life and the life of those that I minister to. You know, so often God will just move supernaturally in, in a certain way and create a miraculous work and you stand back in awe and think, my God, my God, how great you are. And, you know, if we can just take all limit off the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. It makes no difference what the circumstance say. The situation looks how it looks. I am trusting you for the miraculous. It seems that in our life and the life of my family, it's, you know, almost on a regular basis that we have to believe God. We have to believe God for miracles. That's right, because we encounter difficulties and we encounter adverse situations that we just step back and say, God can do it. And so we're going to simply trust the Lord. I've received miracle healings. My son received miracle healings. My little, one of my granddaughters, my oldest granddaughter told me just recently, she said, Nana, I was watching you on the prophetic whisper and you said, God is healing people of headaches. And she said, I had not told you, I'd not told mom and dad that I'd been having bad headaches for a long time and said, he healed me instantly and said, that has been over two weeks ago and I have not had a headache since. She has talked with me about it even just real recent. And she said, do you know, I still have never had any more of those headaches. It works. It works for me. It works for my family. It works for you and your family. You see, God is not limited if we refuse to limit him, okay? 
So I'm talking about miracles. You know, the working of miracles is one of the power gifts and the other uh, power gift is faith and then gifts of healing. And we find those in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And actually there are nine gifts or manifestations of the Spirit in that chapter. If you haven't read it recently, go back and read it and recognize that the Holy Spirit works these gifts. That's right. God imparts those gifts into our lives uh, and they must be worked or operated through the Holy Spirit and His power. So we read of miracles, Old Testament, New Testament, but God is still working miracles today. You see, many people don't know that. They really don't. Very good people, sincere people, Christian people. Many of them will tell you, I believe God worked miracles in Bible days, but I don't really think God works miracles today. But if we can just take, as I said, the limit off God and say, Lord, I might not understand exactly how it works, but I believe you for the supernatural. God will do it. So today I just want to look at some of the, the outstanding supernatural miracles in Scripture. And I believe it will create and build faith in your heart as I share these things. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 5, reading down, we find the sons of the prophets were building a new school. They had the school of the prophets in those days, and they're building a, a new school. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So you know what an axe is? I, I, I hope all of you do. Certainly as a child growing up in the country, I know what an axe is. And it's a sharp object. It on, usually on both sides, it is, it is sharp, and then it's on a handle. And they used it back then to chop wood and to cut wood, and sometimes those would be, uh, you know, very sharp instruments. However, this one was borrowed. And so the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick, he threw it in there, and he made the iron float. That's right. Now, you know that it's totally impossible to make a piece of iron float. So it had to be a supernatural manifestation of God that caused the axe, this iron axe, to come up in, on the top of the water and begin to float that the man who had barred it was able to reach down in the water and pick it up and retrieve it. Now, that, that is a miracle. And people think God's only interested in great big things. Come on. He, they think God just is interested in doing those things like miracles of healing or miracles, uh, maybe finance. That's something just really uh, needful that you would just uh, have to have in your life. But on the other hand, God worked a miracle here when the prophet of God, just simply by faith, obeyed what the Lord told him to do, and it was to throw a stick in the water. Now, come on, let's get real. You can throw all the sticks you want into water, and in the natural, that will not make a piece of iron float. You know that, and so do I. However, when God speaks to you, come on, when God speaks to you to do a thing, though it seems so foolish, though it, it seems as though uh, it... it could never work any benefit for you. If God says do a thing, somebody's listening to me today, God's told you to do something you think is foolish, but when God says do it, then it's going to work. And so that ax had no choice. It had to come up to the top so the man who borrowed it could get it. Okay, now we, I want to show you another unusual thing here in, in 2 Kings. 2 Kings, the second chapter, verse 19. The men, the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. Do you understand? 
They couldn't drink the water. The, the ground was such that it wouldn't, uh, they, they couldn't grow any, anything good in this soil because it's barren. It didn't have all the nutrients and everything in it that they, they needed in order to use that land. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt. Yes, salt. You know that you use at your table? put salt in it, so they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, and he cast the salt in, okay, in, in the water. Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. All right? So the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Okay? Now, all he did is throw some salt in the water. Very foolish, isn't it? That couldn't take poison out of the water. We know that. That, that would be impossible for just a little bit of table salt to, to be thrown into something that's poisonous or bad and they, it's unable to drink the water. But you put some salt in it and now it's healed. What brought about the healing of that water or to make it pure so that they could use it? Nothing but a little word from God. I'm telling you, when we act on the authority of the word from God. Now, I'm not giving you a license today. Just go out and start doing dumb things on your own. I'm not saying that at all. And God may never, ever speak to another man or woman to do some of these things I'm sharing with you. However, he may tell you to go down the road and visit a neighbor and pray for them and you think they, that person doesn't believe or they don't even know Jesus, yet if you act on what God told you to do, then God can heal them. I'm just talking about obedience and the fact that God will work miracles through simple obedience, through those things that really to us may sound ridiculous. But on the other hand, God can move mountains if we obey. Let's look at this in Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 14. The Bible says believers were increasingly added to the Lord in multitudes, both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and they laid them on the beds and the couches that at least the shadow of Peter might fall on some of them. And also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Now, hear me. Peter being a man of God, anointed of God, yes, but the fact that he walked by the sick people and his shadow, you know how you'll go out in the sun and, and you, you, your body will make a shadow? So he walked by the sick people, and when his shadow, not Peter now, but just his image, his shadow, fell on those sick people, they were totally healed. Hallelujah. Why? Because it was a God kind of thing. What I want you to see today is there's nothing that is impossible with God. God can take salt and heal and purify poisonous water. God, God can take a stick and, and tell a, a man to throw a stick in, a, in the water and cause uh, an ax to swim. That's right. He can take the shadow of Peter and cause miracles to happen. My God, can we limit God? Will we limit God, I should say? You know something? God will be just as big as you want him to be. If you want to serve a little bitty God and you think that he doesn't do miracles today, you don't believe he heals, you don't think he's interested in something that you borrowed and now you can't find it to return it, how many times have I said to the Lord, Lord, help me to find such and such? That's right. How many times have I say, Holy Spirit, bring hidden things to light. I cannot find whatever it is I'm looking for. Maybe it's a pair of shoes I think I need to, to put on. Maybe it's some other, you know, something else. But I ask the Lord to help me. That's right. I hope that doesn't make you feel that I'm just a, a ridiculous old woman because I tell you, I believe the Lord wants to be a part of everything that touches our lives. So here, 
God worked a miracle with Peter, and uh, those people were healed of all kinds of diseases. Look at this. this. The Bible says in verse 17, this made the religious leaders angry. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Wouldn't you think that everyone would be so excited that, that Peter, the man of God, was walking down the street and people were getting healed just by his uh, passing by? Wouldn't you think that would excite people? Why is it that some people get angry when God does miracles? You say, surely not. Oh, yes, darling. You know why they get angry? Because it goes totally against their theology. It goes against their reasoning. It goes against everything that they've been taught. And they are not ready to just submit and say, God, you are bigger than anything. Lord, you can do anything. And I'm not going to limit you. I'm going to simply believe you. I'm going to receive my needs met. And you know, if they would do that, there's no telling what God would do in their lives. Amen? Well, of course, amen. Uh, so, you know, they threw the apostles in prison. The Bible says, but at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them all out. Amen? And said, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all, all the words of this life. I am determined to speak all the words of this life. That's right. And trust God for supernatural miracles and manifestation. I want you to come and go with me right now to our place of prayer. And I want you to believe with me that not only your needs are gonna be met, but all the needs of these others that write and call in. Will you do that? Come and go with me. You know, when I come into the studio, I can only bring just a, a handful of the praise reports or the prayer requests that I receive. But I believe that these can represent many, many prayer requests or praise reports. And I know many of you join with me at our time of prayer and you are a prayer warrior, you trust God, you know how to believe God, and I want you to agree with me right now over these prayer needs, that every need will be met, and then we'll share out those things God gives us for many of you today. But right now, let's just say, Father, in Jesus' name, every prayer request, every need that's been represented, Lord, through all of these letters that you have caused people to send in to us. We trust you for miracles today. You said if two of us would agree in earth as touching anything, it would be done of us, of our Father that is in heaven. We trust you for miracles. I trust God for miracles for you today. I, I believe that God is going to show himself strong. There's someone watching me today that God has been dealing with you in dreams and visions. Do you know I'm hearing more and more uh, people say, Aquila, I never had dreams before. I never had visions. And suddenly God has given me these dreams and God is causing me to see visions. Some are seeing uh, Jesus, uh, having Jesus appear to them. There, there are just some outstanding uh, manifestations of the Spirit taking place. And I encourage you, be open to the Holy Spirit. And many of you that God is dealing with, especially in dreams and visions, you need to just open up your heart, write those things down, and watch God, how He watches over His Word to bring it to pass. I just really feel to pray right at this moment for people who are experiencing pain and discomfort in, in their stomach and the lower part of your body. See, I could just say from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, and that would be good. God's interested in healing us no matter what our need may be. But I've learned if I will speak as the Holy Spirit speaks to me, I see a lot more accomplished. That's right. And so right now, you know, I especially see God bringing healing in, into 
the lower part of your body, a, a woman watching me, she's had some serious problems uh, in the uterus. She's being healed today in the name of the Lord. There's someone that has had serious colon problems, I think, cancer uh, of the colon. God is working healing for you today in the name of Jesus. There are uh, those that have had problems with liver conditions that are being healed today. God's taking pain away, especially the lower part of your body today. Right at this moment, you know, a moment later, God, you give me something, someone's having uh, headaches or something else. But at this moment, I just want you to trust the Lord. God, just say, Lord, I receive my healing. Whatever the need is, Lord, I receive my healing. I trust you to do this. Uh, there, there is a pastor that is watching me today that has, has had God to just bless you and use you, and you know what it is to see miracles, but something happened. You got into sin, and, and something uh, during that time, I'm telling you, God, it's almost like you feel that the Holy Spirit has just pulled back from your life. But let me encourage you today because I believe that you have repented of sin and God's restoring you. And that's a spirit of condemnation now that's upon you. I take authority over the spirit of condemnation. There are a number of ministers here in this word today. And you have let down your, your, your gold and, and you have just really let Satan find a place to come in. And now then you have been living in condemnation, even though you have been really free of that sin for a long time. So recognize it's condemnation of Satan. And that thing is broken off you today in the name of Jesus. Restoration is yours. We serve a forgiving God. If God did not forgive us, none of us could make it. That's right. Thank God the blood is forever and you have been redeemed, and I encourage you, get back into the work of God. Get back into the flow and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to stand amazed at how God is going to restore your ministry and bring you forth. God loves you so much. He wants to bless your life. I want to ask you to do something. Would you please write me and tell me what God is doing in your life and the good testimonies. Also let Dr. Crouch hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless. Prophetic Whisper has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network and only with your